Today's lesson, Vmax, VOC, IOC. Understanding voltage and current. Decoding the mysteries, AC versus DC coupling. Why the steep price tag? Driving the electrons. How do I implement these into fitting into my personal scenario? Let's just keep it simple. Hey there, Castaway Crew. Hello. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a plunge into the world of solar energy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Solar can be a bit overwhelming, right? But don't let that deter you. In this video, we'll be tearing down all the complexities. Now, we're not diving too deep into the technicalities and by no means is this a full installation tutorial, but think of it as your go-to crash course in solar fundamentals. From deciphering those tricky spec sheets to sizing up the perfect solar setup for your needs, we're covering it all. Now remember, always make sure to use and consult a qualified electrician, especially if you're not sure. Of course, I want you all to stay safe out there and electricity is no joke. But I also want you to have a coherent understanding of the fundamental solar principles and in which they work so that you can make the best decision possible for your circumstances and at the same time make sure that you don't get taken for a ride. So if you're ready to shed some light on the solar basics, grab your sunglasses and your favorite brew and hit that like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get started. AC versus DC coupling. Anyway, AC and DC coupled systems. Now, starting with the fundamental choice between AC and DC coupled systems, this decision shapes how your solar energy flows through your home and property, and it's crucial to get it right. So what's the deal with these two approaches? Well, let's break it down. First up, we've got AC coupled systems. Picture this. Direct energy from your solar panels is channeled straight to an inverter, magically transforming it into a usable electricity for your home. No batteries, no fuss. It's like a direct link from the sun to your sockets. Easy, right? But here's the catch. This setup only works when the sun is shining and no storage means no nighttime power. Now, onto the other side of the spectrum, the DC coupled system. Here, solar panels play matchmaker with the batteries. The panels send DC, which is direct current, and charge a bank of batteries first. And when you need the power, an inverter pulls that stored energy from your batteries, converting it into AC energy for your home. It's like a power reservoir, ready when the sun takes a break. But, and there's always a but, the multiple conversions can be a lot less efficient and the batteries have to bear all the load, which means they cycle more frequently and this of course diminishes their lifespan. But Dan, why can't we just combine the two and use both for day and night? Well guys, I'm glad you asked. Introducing the hybrid system. This beauty combines the best of both AC and DC worlds, all packed into one smart inverter. And with today's prices, it's practically a no-brainer. So let me break down why the hybrid system is stealing the spotlight. Imagine having the flexibility of direct solar power during the day, like an AC coupled system, and the ability to store excess energy in batteries for those nighttime Netflix sessions. That's the hybrid system for you. A dynamic duo that's got your back around the clock. And why go hybrid? Well, for starters, it's like having a solar powered sidekick that adapts to your energy needs. When the sun is out, it feeds your home directly. When it's gone, it seamlessly taps into stored energy, ensuring a continuous power supply. Plus, it's efficient, it maximizes your solar investment, extends battery life cycles, and did I mention the space-saving perk of having just one inverter that does it all? Now, here's the caveat. Why don't we see more hybrid systems all over the place? Well, that's a good question. And the secret's out, they're pricey. But I'm going to give you the real reasons as to why. 
See, heavy regulations and certification costs are a big thing, especially here in Australia. So why the steep price tag? Well, you can blame it on the solar regulators and certifiers doing a tango with the manufacturers. Here in Australia, we've got authoritative bodies such as the Clean Energy Council, the CEC, the Clean Energy Regulator, CER, and even state-specific overlords, all calling the shots. They decide which solar brands and components can be installed in our homes, and guess what? Manufacturers have to pay a hefty price to get their golden ticket, which is that shiny certification sticker you see on the back of those spec sheets. Those approved systems, you see, they've earned their stripes by bowing to the laws and standards set by our regulatory overlords. Does it mean unapproved systems and components are dodgy or of poor quality? Not necessarily. It's more kind of like the government's VIP section. Pay the entrance fee or find another club. Now this drama mostly plays out for grid-tied properties. Living off the grid, on your farm, different story, right? The choices are plenty and you won't need to auction off a kidney for solar power. Case in point, my trusty $400 Chinese inverter, it ran my shed for years. Lights, power outlets, table saw, all my power tools, battery charges for my cordless drills, and so on and so forth. And guess what? Still kicking today. But would I trust it to power my home? Probably not. See, the key is knowing what to look for without breaking the bank. And that is why I'm here to help. So today's lesson, decoding the mysteries of the specs. PMAX, VOC, and ISC. What on earth did these acronyms mean? Let's shine some light on it. Maximum power. PMAX. PMAX. This is as simple as it can get. PMAX simply means the maximum amount of power the solar panel is capable of producing at optimal conditions. So a module that has a PMAX of, what's a nice round number? 500 watts. Will very rarely produce this value unless conditions are absolutely perfect, which is primarily dictated by the environment. These things as temperature, dirt accumulation, general weather conditions, etc., etc., all affect the VOC and ISC of a panel, which is directly proportionate to how much power output the panel is able to provide. Very rarely will you actually see a 500 watt panel generate its stated 500 watts. Now, the next two most important values, VOC. VOC. Open circuit voltage. VOC or open circuit voltage is the solar panel's potential when there's no load attached. So it's like the panel stretching its legs, showing off its maximum voltage. Think of it as the what if scenario. If nothing's connected, how high can this panel go? Now, this is a highly unlikely circumstance and would only occur if the panel or panels were connected to each other and had absolutely no load whatsoever if they weren't connected to an inverter, even since an inverter still has a small current draw to power itself, it has a standby consumption. So the likelihood of ever seeing that figure would be highly unlikely, especially if you have loads in the house that are turned on, batteries that need to be charged, and of course the inverter itself consuming its own standby electricity. However, there are circumstances in which we could see these maximum potential values, the VOC and the ISC, and it relates to temperature and weather conditions. But I'll get to that a little later on in the video. Now, the ISC, short circuit current. On the flip side, we've got short circuit current. This one's all about the panel flexing its muscles. When we short out its terminals, it is the absolute maximum current the panel can deliver in a short circuit scenario, meaning enough loads are energized and demanding everything the solar panels are able to produce. Picture it as the panel saying, here's what I've got when the going gets tough. Now, similarly to VOC, temperature and weather also have an impact on how this value responds to environmental conditions. So you're probably sitting there wondering, how do I implement these into fitting into my personal scenario? Well, knowing VOC helps us understand the peak voltage our system can handle, and ISC reveals the maximum current 
that it can deliver. So this is essential info to ensure we're not pushing our solar panels to crazy extremes that could end in a fiery finale. So when you're in the solar specs maze, remember VOC is the potential, open circuit voltage, ISC is the muscle, and together they're the dynamic duo of appropriate implementation. Which brings me on to my next point, the implementation. So Dan, how do I implement this knowledge and translate it into an effective calculation that makes sure I set myself up in the right way and don't exceed my inverter's parameters? Well, <laughs> first we start by learning the basics of electrical principles, understanding voltage and current. Voltage is the push in a water pipe. It's the force driving the electrons. Basically, you can view it as being the pump. Now, current, that's the flow of those electrons. Look at it as how many there are or how dense is the number of electrons flowing through this pipe. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Series versus parallel. Now, in this video, we're only talking about your most common and most popular series solar setup. No micro inverters or optimizers or commercial level wire, wiring. Wire, 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 wire. Uh, mm. Let's just keep it simple. The others have their applications in other areas, but for the sake of this video, I don't want to confuse anyone. Wire, so wire, imagine wire. that your solar panels are team players. In series, they're holding hands connected to each other. The voltage increases by each panel's voltage value. So say each panel has a nice round figure of 50 volts VOC, open circuit voltage. So it's a simple equation of 50 volts times the number of panels. So 10 panels is 500 volts. But here's the twist, the current stays the same. So even if you have 10 panels connected in series with a VOC of 500 volts, but each panel has a short circuit current of 15 amps, then 10 panels connected in series still equal a total of 15 amps short circuit current. If you have 10 panels connected in parallel, the equation becomes 10 panels times 15 amps is 150 amps, but your total panel VOC remains at 50 volts. So it's pretty simple, right? In a series setup, just multiply the voltage by the number of panels. Voila, that's it. Now, when it comes to connecting to your inverter, remember, these things have limits. Don't push them too hard, respect their boundaries, and they'll keep your energy dance smooth and steady. Remember to always look at your inverter's spec sheet. Don't cram too many panels together. Inverter specs will tell you exactly how much VOC and ISC each string can handle, which is usually found on one of the sides or the bottom of the inverter. Too much voltage, inverter overload. Too much current, you're playing with fire. Literally. So just remain within your inverter parameters, plan and keep it balanced. This solar puzzle isn't hard, it just needs a little patience and a lot of respect for the rules. Now, if this is the method for sizing AC coupled systems, how about for DC? Well, the answer is we do it in the exact same way. So, charge controllers, like any component worth their money, come with specific ratings. Of course, these parameters are exactly the same the ISC, short circuit current, and the VOC, the open circuit voltage, are always the key players in this symphony. By now, I'm sure we all understand that these ratings are fundamental to a seamless solar performance. So, in DC coupled systems, charge controllers take center stage. They are responsible for directing solar input to the batteries in a controlled and consistent manner. Think of them as the ultimate battery bank guardians, safeguarding your batteries from overcharging or excessive discharging. So as you can see, balancing voltage and current is the key to achieving best performance, ensuring optimal efficiency and longevity for your solar setup. So charge controllers, in their automated brilliance, operate intelligently to optimize the charging process. They adapt to varying solar inputs ensuring your batteries receive the right dose of energy tailored to their needs. With the push of a few buttons, you can set the battery type you are using in your app or physically on your controller's screen, if it has a screen. Most of them are just Bluetooth connect these days and they have an app. And it will do the rest for you. 
It's a delicate ballet of precision and reliability. Now, onto the final and most crucial point before our lesson concludes for today. This is the environmental impact on your solar design. Make sure you stay with me on this because it could be the make or break of your setup. Now, understanding temperature's role. Solar modules, despite their STC ratings, which stands for Standard Test Conditions, live in an imperfect world that is far from standard. This needs to be taken into consideration when developing your plan to get self-sufficient. See, when temperatures drop, solar modules will actually perform better than their stated values, especially in chilly climates on an absolutely perfect day with no cloud cover. Let's talk about the temperature coefficient, a behind the scenes player, if you will. When the temperature strays from the ideal 25 degrees Celsius, which is what the STC tests at, this coefficient kicks in. So below 25 degrees, all values on the spec sheet will actually increase, potentially enhancing performance. Now, conversely, as temperatures rise, the performance gains taper off. While this coefficient operates within a maximum of about three to 4%, it's a key consideration in real world solar applications. So guys, just make sure you keep that in mind. If you live in a colder climate, maybe don't push your array to match the limits of your inverter and leave a little headroom. Because you may just get that one cold perfect day where all conditions are ripe for some fireworks. So try to avoid that at all costs. Now obviously in the Philippines, uh, as me being an example, I would feel very confident to push this right to the limits, maybe even add an extra panel, all things considered. See, temperature being the key factor, I know our panels would never even get close to hitting their open circuit voltage, their VOC, or their ISC max. Especially with a little shading from trees, dirt that's always present in the atmosphere, and the orientation of our roof. So consider the environmental elements that impact solar performance. As mentioned, cloud cover, dirt, other atmospheric factors, all these things can influence the effectiveness of your solar modules. Achieving peak values in less than ideal conditions is a rare occurrence. Real world performance, while robust, interact with the, let's say the unpredictability of nature. So guys, in your journey through this tapestry of this solar labyrinth, it's crucial to acknowledge the challenges solar modules face in the real world. Exciting times lie ahead, Castaway Crew. Our solar journey is about to take a hands-on turn as we gear up to install the solar system on our Ormoc home in the Philippines. I will be your guide through every intricate detail, ensuring that you won't miss a beat in this empowering journey. So guys, come on, please hit that subscribe button, tap the like, and ensure you're part of our growing community. We've got a wealth of knowledge to share, and this solar installation is an experience you won't want to miss. So don't just watch, join us in making dreams a reality. Subscribe to The Castaway Couple, your pathway to a sustainable off-grid lifestyle. If you haven't already, dive into our latest videos, by the way. Uncover the story of our off-grid dream that unfolded in Pilton and discover the virtual tour of our Philippines home. Watch, learn, get inspired. Until our next adventure, stay safe and take care out there. This is The Castaway Couple, signing off.